Hey guys, this is Vadim with Max Tech, and this right here is our 2019 Mac Pro. We just unboxed it, and it was probably the best unboxing experience ever. The boxes were extremely heavy. The design is incredibly solid and amazing. So in this video, we're gonna be testing the thermal performance, the fan noise, and a bunch of benchmarks. And believe it or not, it's turned on right now and I literally cannot hear it. This configuration of the Mac Pro is packing the 12 core Xeon, 48 gigabytes of six channel RAM, and the powerful Vega 2 graphics card with 32 gigabytes of VRAM. The reason we got this specific configuration is because we believe it's a very good middle of the road configuration for a lot of professionals. Now the only thing we would change about this setup is the RAM, and we actually did. We ordered 192 gigs of memory for under $700 compared to paying Apple $3,000 for that upgrade. So in tomorrow's video, make sure to subscribe because in that video, we're gonna show you how easy it is to change the RAM yourself. It's actually the easiest out of any Mac machine. Now we did order the optional afterburner card because we wanna test out if it's worth the extra $2,000 for those who work in that format, but we think that most people don't need it. Let's start with the fans. Now what's surprising me the most about the Mac Pro is that this whole time I haven't been able to hear it at all. So what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna go into TG Fan Pro and check out the fan speeds. All right, so this is very interesting. I got four fans right here. The first one looks to be the power supply fan and it looks like it's at the minimum speed around 500 RPMs. And one of the three case fans is completely at the minimum and these two are just slightly above at around 540 to 593 RPM. And it's interesting that the maximum for these three is 2500. Now, the 16 inch MacBook Pro surprised us because it was actually a little bit lower than before. It was at 5700 compared to 6000. And this only goes up to 2500. So what I'm gonna do now is hit this max button and see how loud these fans can get if it absolutely has to. All right, so they're maxed out right now. Oh, can you guys hear that? Woo! Wow, look at that. All red right here, maxed out. Wow, all right, so I could definitely hear that right now. So if it needs to, it can definitely get pretty loud with a lot of airflow. I could actually feel it right now. Like you could, you could dry your hair with this. There's a lot of airflow back here. But we're gonna be testing our benchmarks to see if we can overload the system with as much as we can to see if it can actually get anywhere near this loud. So right here I have Cinebench R20 open and right next to it Intel Power Gadget so we can look at the frequencies, the power draw, the temps. But first, a huge thank you to Micro Center for making our Mac Pro content possible. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics. From gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an Apple authorized dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department and with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from the iPhone, Micro Center carries the full line of Apple products and they have the largest selection of third party products made for Mac and iPad. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order the specific Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs. Check the link in the video description to find a location near you or browse all of Micro Center's Apple products. Back to the Mac, let's go ahead and run Cinebench R20. So it looks like the frequencies are not going below 3.7 gigahertz, which is really good because the base is 3.3 and the temps stayed below 55 degrees the whole time. That's very interesting. We just hit 5,432 points Cinebench R20. This is actually higher than we expected because it's 50% faster than our iMac Pro, which is packing the eight core Xeon processor. Another interesting thing we noticed is that the fans did not kick up at all and it did not go past 55 degrees Celsius during that whole test. And now we're sitting at 32 degrees Celsius idle, which is actually quite good. All right, so we just started the fifth consecutive run of Cinebench R20. The frequencies are staying the same. The temps are under 69 degrees right now. And look at the fans right here. Two fans are still completely at the minimum and these are still just slightly over. They're not up at all. I can't hear this thing at all. We're on our fifth run and we're maxing out the CPU 100% as you guys can see right there. This is weird. So even though these fans can get pretty loud if you max them out, as you guys just saw, five or six consecutive runs, 100% CPU usage, the fans are barely above the minimum. I can't even hear it right now. So if you like silent machines, this is literally the one to get. 
Now getting into benchmarks, we're gonna start off with Geekbench 5's CPU test, and right here we have a multi-core score of 12,518. Now that's around 55% faster than our iMac Pro. As you guys know, we can already get really high core counts like on the iMac Pro, up to 18 cores, but what we can't get is really high graphics performance, so right now we're running Geekbench 5's metal test. So the results are in and we got a Geekbench 5 metal score of 86,716. That's about 85% faster than our iMac Pro. And as you guys can see, if you look at Geekbench 5's metal benchmarks charts online, it completely blows away everything that's here. The highest score here is 66,900. And right here we have 86,716. That's just with one Pro 2 GPU in here. You could actually get four of those in this Mac Pro. Now let's also test the graphics performance in the Blackmagic RAW speed test. And this is gonna be mainly for video editing of RAW footage. So right here for the 8K Metal, we're getting 114 FPS. So what this shows us is that this can handle four streams of 8K Blackmagic RAW in multicam. And looking over here at 4K, that's around 20 streams of 4K Blackmagic RAW at the same time with the single Vega 2. Not even the dual, but the single. Now, if you wanna see a lot more detail about video editing, go down in the video description and click on Max's video that's fully dedicated on video editing with the Mac Pro. So that makes me very curious about gaming performance. Now, I know nobody's gonna buy this to play games, don't do that, but let's say after your work is done, maybe you wanna launch some games just a little bit on the side. So let's go ahead and run Unigen Heaven's benchmark on the Extreme preset and see how well the Vega 2 performs for gaming. It's been running for quite some time and I still can't hear the Mac Pro. And looking over here at the temperature, it's at 68 degrees Celsius, which is really good. Usually GPUs try to stay below 85. Now looking at the fan speeds below, you can see that they're still just barely over the minimum and I still can't hear the Mac Pro. 112.6 FPS, that's about 50% more FPS than our iMac Pro. So if you guys are gonna choose to play games on the Mac Pro, it's gonna absolutely kill and it's gonna be completely silent while doing it. So since this is doing so well, we're actually gonna combine the Mac Pro with Apple's new 6K Pro XDR display playing at 6K resolution to see how well it performs in gaming. So if you're not already subscribed, do that right now because that video is coming very soon. Now for all of you 3D animators and renderers, we're gonna run Blender's graphics benchmark. We're about halfway through this test, and if you look over here in iStat menus, we can see the VRAM usage of this graphics card. And we can see that right here, we're actually sitting below 50% VRAM usage, so that's below 16 gigabytes of VRAM during Blender rendering. All right, so Blender benchmark just finished, and it looks like we got a score of 16 minutes and four seconds. For reference, our iMac Pro finished this test in one hour and 55 minutes, which is an absolutely massive difference. That's over seven times faster with this Mac Pro compared to our iMac Pro. Now, we're not exactly sure why this happened, but we noticed this trend with all of the last gen Vega graphics, the Vega 20, the 48, the 56, the 64, compared to the new Navi 7 nanometer graphics that's in the Mac Pro, that's in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. These graphics are finishing 3D rendering benchmarks like Blender a lot quicker than the older gen. Based on what we've seen from this test, if you're gonna go with a third party graphics card in your Mac Pro, we highly recommend that you go with the Radeon 5700 XT or the Radeon 7 because both of those feature AMD's Navi 7 nanometer graphics, but we'd probably recommend the Radeon 7 because it does have 16 gigabytes of the super fast HBM2 graphics memory. And now for our final extreme stress test, we're gonna run Cinebench R20 back to back while Unigen Heaven benchmark is running. So that's gonna max out the CPU and the GPU at the same time, and we're gonna look at those fan speeds. We've been doing consecutive runs of R20. We're actually on the fourth run. Unigen Heaven is finishing up, and looking right here, the fans didn't change at all. They're still at the same, slightly over minimum fan speed, which is really odd. I still can't hear it, haven't heard it at all this whole time. This is shocking. Even with the CPU and GPU at 100% maxed out, it's still dead silent, which is insane because this 
This test right here would get the Mac Pro and the iMac Pro loud, and this is still dead silent. So there you guys have it. Let us know down in the comment section below what you guys thought about these benchmarks and thermal performance tests. We're also gonna be doing a lot more videos on the Mac Pro and the 6K Pro XDR display coming very soon. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to click that circle above right now to do so. Tap the like button below, and we'll see you in those videos very soon.